there, YouTube. Yes, it's Tuesday, the day after. It's Tuesday, January 18, 2022. Uh, I have the engine under cover. Uh, the reason for that is, is just so you know, I don't leave the engine out, okay? I, I, I only display this beauty when I do these videos. Otherwise, I keep it covered. Uh, you know, it's probably... It probably doesn't matter, <laughs> but really, they sell bags and everything, but, you know, this little bag looks just fine. Um, I'm going to make this entry kind of brief because uh, I'll be doing a follow-up at the end. This, of course, is the, the part four of four, um, the final of the so-called M117 or 560SL engine teardown series. Uh, oh, oh! <laughs> um, I, I cheated, I cheated already, so I'm going to do a, a, a refresh here. Ah! How do you do a refresh? There we go. Oh, actually, <laughs> I cheated and I saw that I had one more subscriber, but believe it or not, I'm up to, I have 37 subscribers. I can't even believe that. I don't know if you guys can see that. But yesterday it was 35, and now it's 37. I think that's like amazing. And welcome to my to number 36 and number 37. Yeah, we got an odd and even this time. I love it. I love it. Um, gosh, I hope you're joining because you're enjoying the videos. I mean, that's why you subscribe. Um, and I promised early on, you know, I'm just gonna video, video. I'm just gonna be pumping stuff out, and you see, I'm doing it as best as I can. Uh, we're going to have a slowdown, I think, because we're down this far, so, uh, but we'll catch up all that at the end, so let's see. As usual, yep, I'm trying to commence it, boom, 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 boom. These are all the topics we're going to be covering in this one. So, we're going to take off that front crank, that front cover, timing chain cover. Oh, that's going to be a great one. So keep an eye on that one when we take off the, the timing case cover. The crankshaft seal is no big deal. I thought that was going to be hard. If you saw my other video, which I think can, there'll be a link right there. I guess I'll put one there. Um, not that you should go. You should continue to watch this. But I put a link up here just for fun. <laughs> See if I can do it. The rear seal, oh gosh, that was scary. That was a scary thing. If you're going to take off the rear cover, don't take off the seal. Uh, just take off the whole cover and remove the seal some other way. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to get all the way down to uh, removing these uh, pistons and pulling all that stuff out. So uh, uh, let's see. Oh yeah, I want to kind of, I don't know if you want to call it a disclosure or whatever you want to call it, but uh, um, I've never removed an engine before, uh, you know, from a car, and I've never torn one down. So, and needless to say, I've never put one together. <laughs> So I'll get you all the way down to this point, and then hopefully I can get you back in your car. Uh, let's see, what else do we want to do here? Oh yeah, my catchphrase. This is how I did it, not how I do it, because I've never done it. <laughs> oh, again, if you see I did something wrong, you know, especially getting down this far, I probably did something wrong, because it's weird how the rods and everything work on this, on this, I think. Compared to the other videos and stuff I've seen of Chevys and Fords and all that, because I've seen a lot of those, you know, guys build those cars. Nothing like this, and uh, I'm surprised. Uh, but yeah, I've never done it, so we're going to just figure it all out together. And um, uh, again, if, uh, as you can see, this is... This Mercedes stuff is super, 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 super duper expensive, and I'm having, I have to say I've spent a whole lot of money up to this point already. You cannot believe the amount of money I've spent, but it's in the, in the many thousands of dollars. Um, but uh, in the description, I put a PayPal link. If you, you know, I think it's, in, it's impossible for me to even consider people giving me money. I wouldn't give me money. <laughs> but if you do give me money, it'll go into this. That's the only place I'm going to put it. Uh, I'll share with your friends and all that so other people can find the video. And uh, so 
let's just get this thing started. Uh, I'll catch up to you guys at the end of this video. Uh, we're going to pick up right where we left off from the last video. See you in the end. Okay, there is the sealing ring in the front, the front crankshaft seal. The instructions say to take the seal out before you remove the cover. But they tell you to put the seal on the cover, press the seal onto the cover, and then put it on to the block. So the only reason I can think of that they want you to take the seal out here is that it's easier to take it out, I guess, because you have leverage. But to me, the cover is the cover is the cover unless you're going to use this as leverage. So I don't really understand. I'm going to think about it before I just decide how I'm going to go about it. There's the seal. So I don't think I can get in here. Not that, that. Let me see. Something like that, maybe? How far in am I? Don't want to be too far in, right? Oops. Oh, it came. It, uh, that was not too difficult. So I'm surprised. That's it. And uh, we didn't didn't do any damage or anything, so that's it. It looks like it's uh, fully intact. The spring was still on it. Um, probably was doing its job. Um, but uh, we've taken that off, like the instruction said, and we did not touch this this case at all when we did it. Of course we'll get a better look uh, when we get it out but I, I wiped this down a little bit and you know this is nice so gosh I wish that back cover was like that. This one here is just fine but I believe they actually sell inserts for these so that's a possibility if you need to. Alright now we just gotta take off the bolts and then that front cover is gonna come off and we'll watch that timing chain we got to take it off that gear when we do it too. All right, again, you don't have to do anything in any specific order. You just want to make sure you put your bolts in the right holes. So it's 13 millimeter. And uh, I like it when they kind of go like that. <laughs> or, you know, not too tight. Because I know it's not supposed to be that tight. Nice and clean, a little bit of sealant looks like. I made a box with the same pattern so I can stick my bolts in it. I could use my drill if I wanted to. Just make note, this one here is not one of those hex heads ones. Alright, so it looks like we have this, 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 this. All of our pieces are off. So. I'm going to go put things away and clean up a little bit and get ready to pull that off. Alright, so the manual says to get a big, big hammer and just beat that right off the front of it. Ah, that's not what I'm going to do. I have a nice little rubber hammer and a little block of wood, I think, probably, because we have the engine out, we have such a, a, an advantage over the instructions. Because there's some little spots right here. I'm afraid the whole thing's going to come flying off. Um, <laughs> now that I think about it. So I want to I wanna just get an assistant. 
Okay, so I'm going to get an assistant and we'll come back. Okay, I got my assistant. Um, you know, of course it can't come all the way off, but there's no sense of damaging anything. So I think there's a little spot here. And I can see it's already cracked open. So, you know, I just barely tapped it. So, it's coming right off, no problem. Really easy when you do it this way. There it is. I'll just... You can, you can hear it even. And let me see. We have to be careful of the chain and everything, so... This whole thing will come off. There we go. Be careful here. And not the front, so... There we go. Alright, there's the chain. Alright, nothing else came apart. So, I'm just uh, being very cautious, that's all. So, this is what this side looks like. Alright, and then I'm going to turn it around this, like this. And show you the back side. Okay, so, there's oil ring here and oil ring here. Oil ring here and an oil ring there. I want to make note of that. Because there's no broken guys behind here either. So that's what this other side looks like. That's okay. I'm just going to set this down. There's a guide and there's a guide. And I don't see that that's broken. And I don't see that this is broken. So those pieces of guides were from when this thing had previously broke a guide on top. Through a chain, trashed out this cylinder over here, and that uh, uh, not cylinder, but the the head, and so that's why it has a different head on it. All this looks really good in here. All these gears look great. We'll take a closer look. All right, that's basically the orientation of the chain. You see, it'll go up there like that, and then this this thing here will have the chain tensioner on it. And then go around the sprocket. And then that one goes along this guy here, this lower guy, and this lower guy. I believe I have new ones already. Um, my chain is new. Obviously, I have a new chain. Um, this was tight when it was on there, so it's probably just fine. Um, but we're going to have to start taking it apart. So, I mean, that actually fits in there tight. There is no slack at all. So, has a, a nice color to it. I mean, it looks nice. I'm going to remove this guy. It just slides on there. Drop this off the crank. Why don't I just pull this front pulley off? Because this is interesting, I believe. It just sits in there. Doesn't look like there's any bushings or anything. Let's see if this thing will sit there like that. Okay. Alright, so. Let's take a closer look at this. The teeth are look great. Right, the teeth look wonderful. Um, it's longer on one side than the other side. The longer side goes in towards the engine. And this here is for your distributor. It looks like this distributor thing comes out of here just like this top one. If anything has to go a certain way, so I'm being very careful. All I see is an oil gully, nothing special. Um, again, these gears look great. Same thing with these, these gears here. Everything looks great. There's no wear. I don't see any, you know, on the on this thing or anything. 
I'm, I'm guessing I have to take this guide out, I, and I haven't looked to see how that comes apart, but it, I, I'm guessing it's probably just pushed on or something, so. This, these, on this side, obviously, we know we got a bolt. It's just pressed on there. So, I kind of got it to move, but it's coming. There we go. So that's it. I wanted to point out, uh, these are probably original because they're, they're worn. I have some new ones and they're, they're, they don't have these grooves in it. So now we can remove that chain. from the sprocket. Ta-da! And that's a new chain because I'm the one that, whoops, I'm the one that installed it. Just, just a quick once over for my sanity. Just so we can see how everything looks. How things go together. It's your gear, it's on a key. Uh, you got, that's for your guide. This is kind of dirty. Not sure exactly what that is does and everything. So taken off so much, I forget how much I've taken off. So <clears throat> let's go look at the cover. So I was thinking, you know, that they might have taken this off or whatever. I'm not so sure now. And the reason why I say is because if you went through that trouble, wouldn't you replace this? And this is all worn. It's grooved like it's pretty darn thin. So I would ask myself... And, and it's kind of not, you know, the up and down don't bother me so much as much as the wobble. But you can see that's quite worn. So we'll be replacing that for sure. All right, so I don't know where we're going to be when we get into this timing issue stuff. So I'm just going to make some kind of a note. You see how these are laid out? This is like all the way at the top, then this one here is kind of in between this one and that one, and that one's all the way down, right? And then we come up, go over to this side, and you notice that this one is right about there, and this one's up at the top. That one's at the bottom. And this one's in between. So it's interesting how those are like in a row over there where they, these alternate. Boom, 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 boom. And then this side is like doom, 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 doom. Right? Doom, 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 doom. I just found that to be interesting. So that's top dead center. Um, I don't know what other indicators <laughs> there's going to be when we do it. Um, there's my key right there. Obviously, that's not pointing to anything. There's nothing on this case that I see right now. But when we read the instructions, I'm sure there's a way that you get everything in time. So, <laughs> let's hope so. Otherwise, we're going to punch pistons and everything else with valves and the whole 10 yards so we don't want to be doing that kind of stuff all right well that's that takes care of the front uh, cover before I start taking the pistons out one thing I want to do is I, I just want to kind of clean up the carbon and the grease and stuff a little bit out of the tops here because I want to number each one of the pistons. A little bit of brake fluid. And I have a plastic brush, just a parts cleaner brush. So it doesn't have to be perfectly clean, but this brake fluid breaks up carbon pretty good. 
But like this, this one here was worse in carbon than the other ones. With the heads on, it worked, it was pretty well balanced. <laughs> All right, now you got a little bit different view there. Now, there's something to note here that this is one plus. Um, when I get fully cleaned here, I'll see. Um, you know, but there's ones on here, and I know that means something. Uh, our heads or something say the same thing. I don't know exactly, but I know this all means something. So we'll learn about that. Um, I didn't realize this, but I guess I didn't hit uh, record. <laughs> well, I, I, all I did was just number my pistons, and I'm using an acrylic paint pencil to do that. I'm sure you can see in there, but there's an arrow on every single one of these pistons in the front of that piston. All an arrow pointing towards the front of the vehicle. We have all our, our pistons marked with an acrylic paint. While I was wiping these off, there's something I noticed. Do you see that? That's a V and then two lines. Well, guess what? That says five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, that's cylinder number eight. You see this? So somebody has taken this engine apart. See it? That's number three. Right there. This is cylinder number three. Then this one here is cylinder number two. All right, I just used a little bit of brake clean and just wiped it. <clears throat> so we'll see now if I can mark it the same way as they did. All right, I got my buddy with me today, Ryan Paul Johnson stopped by. In the house. In the house, yeah! <laughs> so now we'll see what we'll mess up. <laughs> uh, I'm excited. All right, so all I did is I put the nut back onto the front of the crank, uh, on the front of the crankshaft, and you can, so that way there I can turn the crank, you can turn it any direction you want, because you know, we have no timing chains or anything, we can't mess anything up anymore. <laughs> We've already messed it up since we got it this far. <laughs> all right, so 27 millimeter, right? That's all we need. So Mercedes would probably want you to get a special tool. So I have a 12 sided, a 12 point. I think they call this a spline. So if you notice these are 12 point nuts. I see people using six points and stuff like that, but I don't know if I would do that. So I wanna start with this one. This is the one that, that we know is got a bad cylinder in it, so. Well, let's let's get a feel for it. Ooh. It felt about the same, so I would say it was a pretty equal torque. Um, I'm going to actually keep track of how the, that nut is put in there, so I put it back on the same the same stud. Alright, so this is my other tool. It's a drumstick. I'm assuming that's all it takes to take it apart. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't know. I thought it would just come right apart. The manual doesn't really say anything special. Tug on it. Yeah, I know, but normally like when I see it done on like the Fords and the Chevys mm -hmm. and stuff like that, they take those little things off and then just take that off. Did you even try and take it off? I didn't yeah, see you do that. I tried by hand. Oh, okay. That's how they do it. It's all pretty easy. I'm gonna bring it back up so I can see it, I guess. So there it is. So that's it. All right, let me see you try and take that off. Yes, I don't know. I mean, it's, I already have the nuts off. You know? You know, and I don't know if I'm allowed to use this as a, 
a pop. I don't know how you take them off. So these are the things I, I run into and then I'm stuck. That's why it's nice to be able to see if somebody has done it so you mm -hmm. know what you're you know what to expect. It's actually all this is milled from one piece. These caps and everything, all from one piece of steel. So if this thing just slides off of these bolts, oh okay. Then I can push that piston back out through this way. And that's what I see everybody else doing. <laughs> you know, but these things came off and then they banged it. They didn't just do, you know, bang it. People panic, but these can only go on one way. I don't know why people panic. I can see this because this, ha uh, on these caps, they have a curve. Mm -hmm. And the curve is always this way. It's always to the outside. Mm -hmm. The only one you probably, I bet you on that, yeah, even on this, see how this curve is this way? Yeah. There's, there's, how could you not, how could you mess that up? It always goes to the, to the side. It's always to the outside, always. So you can't screw that up. Yeah, I have to take this top off and then the bottom goes with the piston. And then there's bearings. So I have to be careful that I don't, that I keep my bearings together. All right, since I, we don't know how that thing budges, I'm gonna put the screw right flush with the top. That way there, they stay with, with their owner. So I think we're gonna go ahead and start to loosen others and through a process of elimination, we should solve <laughs> <laughs> this problem. Somehow, it's got to happen. All right. There you go. Wow! I think that's got to be more than 50 Newton meters. Right? Jeez. I mean, I was even starting to come off that thing. It's hard to stay flat. Gosh! There we oh, go. Oh my gosh. Woo! Man! It's like taking a shit, man. I have an impact. I was wondering if you could do an impact. Yeah. yeah, I was actually wondering. Probably could, but I don't really care for these nuts and stuff, to tell you the truth. All right, let's try this other side. It's hard to, it's hard to tell, you know, whether you're on it. That one there went easier. I wonder if the impact would loosen up the other thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Give it a little. Well, you know, here's the thing. I went on the internet to look to see if I could buy the nuts, mm -hmm. and I can't find them anywhere. Oh wow. Okay. So at the yeah. same time, yep. I'm scared yeah. of that. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know. It's like you can't win. <laughs> it's like really? Is this this is what I got to deal with? It's probably not any easier. See, I like it when it sounds like that. Yeah, that felt really nice. This is not worth it. I just can't. I don't have this much life to do. <laughs> All right, so that's But nice. also, you're at a different point in life than I'm at as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm on my last leg. <laughs> this is what retirement looks like. Well, so now I'm gonna get on the internet and I'm gonna have to post something. The guy's gonna say, "Oh, you don't take it. Off. You don't take those off." So we've loosened all of them, and then we noticed with the with the rubber hammer. I might not post this just for my own document. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I I hit the top of these and I noticed like this one over here was had a hollow sound. Ryan says, "Ah, that sounds different," and uh, so. I just took this little piece of board and I put it right down in there where that piston is and just kind of tapped it and we got it broke. So now I can put it out a little bit more and it won't fall out, we know that. 
there it oh, is. Oh yeah, you can see him moving. Yeah. Oh, it's so satisfying. So yeah, we already got that one. Yeah, <laughs> woo, you're gonna do it. We're gonna do it, right? <laughs> Process of elimination, <laughs> and we did it. Yeehaw! <laughs> you know, luckily I saw guys doing this with their Chevys. So I have plenty of depth in here, so I can. There it is. I'm gonna put my knee there just to be safe because I think that would be like so sad. All right, now I have some cam bearings in here. I'll tell you, that crankshaft looks nice. At least right there it does. Finally. And wow, that cam bearing or that uh, rod bearing looks nice. So we'll get the other one off. Uh, we'll take the top off and get the in it out. Just like that. Now wow. here we got to be careful because, and it's genuine Mercedes. All right, now look, this thing comes this way. All I did was roll it. It looks like it can only go on one way. But this is a bearing, so I'm going to pull the bearing. Okay. And this bearing goes in here just like this see that <laughs> all right Tony in the future you can do this yeah and everyone who's watching this the tolerance is super important so the oil actually shoots in this little hole if you can see that little hole I think you can and then it gets in between this and that, I mean, you know, and lubricates it. So that's why the tolerances have to be so perfect. So, all right, so I'm going to take this out. Now, remember, we wrote on it so we know which way it goes. Push that piston all the way through. That's how it works. Oh, interesting. I didn't know. What's the direction? Right, I mean, so it's different. Good, I was recording. <laughs> Wasn't sure I was recording. So, all right, so we finally got it out. But, you know, it seems like a lot of work. Oh, this time, oh, this one coming out. Uh, this one here, I can actually see what, what went on here. And this has got a number on there. I'm, I'm guessing, you 63. know, this has had a rebuild and I don't know all what's there. This is number one piston. You have to take these out to fix the cylinder. You know, unless they tell me, oh, that cylinder's fine. Yeah. But who's going to tell me that? I will. There it is, yeah. The top. That fit really nice. I'm going to look at it later. <laughs> Did that come out yet? Yeah. Good. Now be careful because you got a bearing. You know, this looks. This looks new to me. Is this it? one looks new. Is it? Yeah. It just looks new to me. <laughs> Look at it. This looks new. Yep. Just like this, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Got it? This is, this is come out really easy. So now you know if you want to take these pistons out, make sure you're fully out. I don't know how I'm going to put these things back in. I, I mean, I can't believe, do they really bang these things together? I feel it already. Yeah, it's, it's coming out. Yeah, just hold that cap. This bearing looks good too. I always forget that I've got a camera there. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'd say those bearings are just fine. Nothing wrong with any of this stuff. Only one. That's it's sad. That it's out. sad that that cylinder was like that. It really is. I wish they would have just fixed it, sleeved it. I think they just put it together and sold it. You know, they told the guy, look, man, you got a scar in there. It's going to cost you another grand because we're going to have to tear everything down and, and redo it all and all that. So, Well, I don't know if we did it right or not, but there we go. Okay. So a little bit more here. Let me try to get a little here. Yeah, you bump both sides. Just, okay, that way you know you don't they don't come out at the angle and right. press on some stuff. You got it. Mhm. Mm Probably not even Jiggle. worth it. There you go. Make sure you hit on both sides if, uh, you know. Okay. Oh, uh -oh. here comes it. Bearing? I mean, that's uh -oh. kind of nice. It only goes on that way. That's the way you got it. That's right. Okay. See, this? there's only that tab on the one. That's it. Yeah, I see. There's no... Yeah. Oh, I guess... But there's no way to put it on. But right. you can put the other one on it. Uh-huh. I'm guessing. I don't know. I don't know either. So we got to figure this stuff out. I want to make sure I don't screw anything up because I... Regardless, even if I buy new ones, i got to put them on the same way. Right. sure that's right. Now, the engine is completely torn apart. See how easy this is to turn now? Uh -huh. I can turn it by hand, actually. Yeah. Sounds good. The only noise you hear is that little piece of plastic from the saran wrap that I have on the back, which we don't even have to worry about anymore. Obviously, we tore the whole engine apart. <laughs> so I'll just leave it like that. Oh, the end of that video just stopped abruptly. <laughs> and the reason is, is because my, uh, I didn't have the camera plugged in. You know, I, I've done that a few times right now, but it made it all the way to the end. I mean, I was just looking at the end and the same thing you're seeing right here. Uh, um, I kind of put some things out here because I want to just kind of look at them together with you, see some of the things I discovered. But can you believe, I, mean, I was looking over the list. Right? You're seeing the same list I'm seeing. I can't believe that I did all that, you know, the, the first couple of weeks of 2022. <laughs> I mean, look at all the things we did. You know, we moved all this stuff. I'm really good at removing stuff, you guys. I'm really good at removing. You saw we got all this removed. We're clear down to this point. But, man, I cannot believe I, It's like two pages of stuff, and we compacted all that into... You know, less than four hours of video, and it's very detailed. I believe that anyone who watched the video from the very beginning, uh, matter of fact, if you watched my, my video since the time I pulled the engine out, you've learned how to mark your wiring harness, to taking the whole engine out, putting it up on a stand, some of the things you're going to find out between there. You know, geez, it doesn't fit. What do you got to do to make it fit? And all this other stuff. Um, and, and, detailed step by step by step by step all the way to this point and and everything that I ran into I showed you I mean I disclosed everything so it was what happened that's exactly what happened during the whole process so whole, I kind of thought it was fairly smooth except for these problems that we're going to look at here um, you know I don't, I don't think that we or I made anything worse. All I did was really kind of uncover some of the history of this vehicle and just kind of feel like it was a hack job that was put together. I'm hoping I can just save it. You know, I do have to put this thing back together one way or another. 
Uh, I've been having really a tough time finding a machine shop. I was looking for machine shops. Back in the 70s, there's just machine shops. <laughs> and you just found a machine shop, they're local, all over the place, and you just bring your engines in there, they do valve jobs, they do it all, right? They do all of it. Well, nowadays it's not quite the same. I, I was trying to find a machine shop, I can't even get a return phone call. Can you believe that? Not one. Not one. And I contacted several. I contacted, so then I thought, okay, well, what about, what about Mercedes? I mean, I don't think they have machine shops at Mercedes, so they probably use a machine shop, right? So I called the ser service advisor of all the ones around me, Gilbert, Scottsdale, Phoenix. Um, None of them would re even return my call. So, <laughs> and I, you know, I laid it out. I said, hey, I'm rebuilding a 560 SL and I'm looking for a, a machine shop. I'm sure you, you guys have one in house or you use one outside. Can you let me know? And that's, that's it. That's as far as we got. So then I started thinking, well, geez, <laughs> how am I going to find a machine shop? So then um, I thought, well, what about the people that make sleeves? <laughs> they should know who installs them. So uh, it kind of started out, I was looking for way, you know, ways of fixing my thing, and I find out they sleeve them. Matter of fact, there's a company called Mural, I think is the name of the company, uh, or Milling, I'm sorry. Uh, they actually just make a sleeve for this, it's off the shelf, it's inexpensive and everything else. You just figure you could just go put the sleeve in, right? So, uh, but I couldn't, like I said, I couldn't find anybody. So, but, but during my process, I found a company called LA Sleeve. And they make sleeves, and they're in L.A., and uh, that's Dave, Dave Lasco over there. Um, he says, you can bring your engine over there, and they'll make a sleeve, and he'll install it. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, he even gave me a prices and, 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 and everything. So, uh, uh, but he's in L.A., you know. I'm in Phoenix. It's, yeah, it's six hours, five and a half, something like that. I mean, I can do it. But, you know, coordination and stuff like that. I mean, what if I bring it to us? Oh, man, you need to have this. And I don't have it. So then what? So I, you know, I'd like to find a local shop. So he uh, sent me some uh, some numbers. And and one of the places I found out, you know, uh, they're closed down. I told him, hey, they're closed down. He goes, no, 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 no. They closed their retail stuff down. So that's when things start clicking. Now I start to realize it, i got to contact shops that say they fix cars and they don't really fix cars they send their stuff to the shop right to the machinist and he does all the work sends it back excuse me he sends it back to uh, the shop you took your car to and he tacks on another 20 percent or whatever the heck he does and, you know it's it's a whole process so that's when I found out the other one's actually wholesale They've been in business for years and years and years. You can't contact them because they work with everybody else. They don't really work with you. Probably because they don't want the headache. Can you imagine me going in there and saying, hey, guy. <laughs> well, I'm going to try. I'm going to try. I'm going to try to say, hey, guy, and uh, see if we can get in the back door and, and, and try to get this thing resolved. Uh, another thing I should say that, you know, I did, I contacted half a dozen other repair shops, right? Uh, BMW, Mercedes, Porsche, <laughs> all of them. I figured they would know how to work on these out-of-the-sill blocks and they understand the process of putting in a sleeve, especially Porsche. They have all kinds of problems with sleeving and uh, I don't know. But uh, only one of them returned my phone call. <laughs> only one of them. And it's a Beamer place. And uh, they, they also gave me a number. So now I've got a couple of numbers in my arsenal. So I'm going to try to get that all figured out and resolved. I have to bring it in and there needs to be some professional equipment to, to see how deep that is, how long that is, whether or not the rings are, are spread far enough apart to where we're not going to get blow by and compression loss, you know, and maybe between the honing process and then there's a lapping process that maybe we're going to be in with intolerances and then that's all we have to do. It's a little, I mean, uh, the guy in, at L.A. Sleeves said he'd hone all the rest of them for a hundred bucks, so that part could not be that expensive. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, let's see, so 
I wrote down all kinds of things. So um, let's see. What I want to do is I want to bring you over here and show you <clears throat> some things <clears throat> that I actually noticed during the video. I noticed that these bolts on this pump, on the water pump, had actually broke. I pointed it out in the video, but I didn't even know it until um, I saw the video. You can see how that's shiny right there. And you remember me going, oh, it broke, it broke. And I just kept turning and turning. You know, that's because I can still just keep turning and turning. This thing's still stuck in there. I can't even turn it. I can't pop it out or anything. This thing is just completely rusted. And I notice it's not an actual Mercedes Bolt either. So that may have something to do with it. Um, I think most of what's to do with this problem is the fact that this is a water pump. <laughs> and these are steel bolts. So I don't know if you can or should put stainless steel bolts all around this thing and maybe you wouldn't have that problem. I don't know. But let's look at the damage uh, done on the front. Uh, I, oh, I also think this should be replaced. It's, it's, I don't know. I don't feel that it has, it, I don't know. I think it should be replaced. An, another expense of money I just simply don't have. You see that stud right there? So that's one that's broken in the block. So somehow I got to get that out. And then this is the other one right both of those are frozen in the block now the one bolt looks like it was re uh, uh, removed before and a different bolt was put in I'm hoping they didn't use some kind of JB weld or something like that to get you know cuz I'm telling you I just feel like this has just been a terrible uh, process as you saw when as I started tearing it down I started noticing all kinds of stuff so, you know, it's amazing that you wouldn't take off the pan. <laughs> you know, if those guys would have just taken the pan off, I would have probably not have gone any farther because they would have taken the pan off and retrieved that debris. It's amazing. How do they, uh, I don't know how, so then if they didn't take the pan off, then you tell me how they replaced this rod. I want, to, want you to notice how beautiful and polished that rod is. We're going to bring the light up because I don't want to show too much. That's how beautiful it is. Well, here's its mate right next to it. That looks like a normal rod. Right? New. <laughs> old. I think that piston's new. The whole 10 yards. So this thing, it, it blew up and then they really hacked it back together. I don't know what all they've done. That's all I can tell you. I don't know what they've done. I don't know, man. If you're going to tear it down and you're going to pull out pistons and stuff, why wouldn't you just finish it right? <laughs> it may not be worth it. Um, I saw engines uh, that have less mileage than this one, and this one's been blown, but has less miles than this one, 110,000 miles on eBay for about 4,500 bucks, the whole thing. I don't have the money, so I'll just throw it away and, and wait. Or you can buy, I saw, I did see a block in the lower end, uh, I think it was for around 1,500 bucks. So... You know, those are all my alternatives. You fix it, find a company that knows how to sleeve it without busting up your block, um, uh, and do it for a reasonable amount of money. Or you go out and you find a junkyard and you find what you need. And between the engines, you're going to put something together. Yeah, so that's uh, pretty much, you know, my alternatives. So. Either way, someday this car should be put back together. I mean, it's, I've been, I've had it for a really long time and I sure would like to get it on the road. I really would. And it, 
And my wife does not want this in the garage. She'd like to have her parking spot back. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I can't believe we did all that stuff. So, let's see. Um, what do I want to do in my future videos? So, I do, I will be doing other videos in the meantime. So, I'm going to be trying to find a machine shop and get that all worked out. Um, I kind of feel like the heads looked pretty good. So, I think I'm going to probably go ahead and take them apart. And you guys can go ahead and, and uh, watch that video. I'll replace, you know, the valve stem seals and we'll take the springs out and we'll clean them all up and, you know, put it all back together. And I think there's some different ways we can do leak tests and all kinds of stuff we can do actually even before we redo anything. So that's something I want to do. If I have to remove the crankshaft on this, I won't make a separate video on removing the crankshaft because it's just, you know, so many bolts, right? That's all there is to it. It's the putting it back in is the thing we got to be careful of because it will, you know, you got to, you've got end play you have to worry about, and if we did anything with a crank, and I don't know if we should test it anyways, but there's gaps that you got to do. And I mean, it's a, it's a, that's a real important thing because everything's got to be just right, and then of course all this stuff's got to be put all back in right. And you know it's been done before, and I saw some, we saw measurements in this video. You know my buddy Ryan was over, and we kind of noticed all kinds of different things, the numbers on the thing. I'm guessing they did balance things properly when they replaced all this. Uh, they, it, the car, the guy blew up the engine. That's what happened. It's because he didn't do the proper maintenance on the engine, <laughs> right? I got it for like 139,000, whatever. It's 140,000 now, and they tell you. Around 130,000 or anything over 100,000, you, you better start working on it. So, if you haven't done it already, because I can't believe you only have 100,000 unless you're not driving it, but if you're getting anywhere near that, you better do all that stuff or you're going to end up like this. Just jump, 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 jump. You're going to want to throw it away. All right. So, we're going to do that as a separate video. Um, let me see what else I've got covered in here. I think. Well, we're going to put it back together one way or another, so that's something we're going to work on. Figure out, maybe do stuff. I mean, this is stuff that everybody's got to do. Pull out these, these uh, broken... Oh, gosh, I don't even want to look at it. Ugh. But I'd also like to do a, a thing on the machine shop, you know? I think that'd be great if we can get in there and have a professional measure that scrape, right? Get in there and have it done. Um, but I think the next thing is going to be me taking out the rocker arms and and working on the heads. I think that should be the next step because that's something that has to be done. Um, well, but I need to make I'm going to make a a thing that I can prop up on the bench that will hold the head, and then we can flip the head, not have to worry about hurting it or anything like that, and we'll figure out how to take valves out. I've never done it before, right? Let's figure it all out together. Figure out how we take the camshaft off, right? Let's remove the camshaft from the head. Well, then we'll remove the valve springs and valve guides and and seals and do the whole thing. Why not? Why not? I did this. I, I told everybody, look, if I can't find a machine shop, I'm going to go to an auction. I'm going to buy a boring machine. And I'll set that sucker right up here in the off or the garage, and I'll figure out how to bore it myself. I'm doing everything else myself. Why wouldn't I do that? So, if anybody wants to donate a boring machine, <laughs> I'll do it myself. Gosh, I'll do it all myself. I've been doing it myself all my life. So, you know, I've never, never done this before. That's because I'm too busy doing everything else once in my life. <laughs> ah. Well, until I get to my next video, I'm not quite sure where it will be, but hey, get out there and share this, you know, get a thumbs up and do that, you know, get this thing going. I think it'd be really cool to see this. Oh, yeah, I know, right? You already know. You already know. I couldn't believe it. I had 37 subscribers. It would blow my mind if right now, at the end of the video, I actually have another subscriber. I mean, that would be just silly, right? Let me see how many I got. 
All right, I'm still 37. I thought, how could that be, right? That would be like, wow, that would be like a Cardassian thing. And I, I'm nowhere in that level. Uh -uh. I'm just a, an old guy in his garage taking his 560SL apart and calling it a restoration. <laughs> oh, I also have to worry about electrical, right? I got to fix a lot of electrical in the wiring harness. That's something we could do together. <laughs> Well, until next time, you guys, uh, I'm having a ball, even though this is like, wow! I'm still having a good time because I, it's like I'm not doing it alone. You guys are here with me. All right, well, thanks. Keep supporting me.